Good morning. We look today at Luke chapter 5, verses 17 through 39. And in this, this reading begins with uh, one day while he was teaching. And it says, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. And listen to this. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. I mean, sometimes you know, in our minds, we we might think that, you know, these Pharisees and stuff are only in Jerusalem. But every every synagogue had a Pharisee, a scribe. You know, they all had them. It's like, you know, pastors are all over. Every, you know, communities have them, churches have them. And so there was, I mean, this this group of Pharisees and scribes wasn't just a few, but, you know, it was a large number. And, you know, they had come from a wide area to listen to Jesus. I mean, because the, just like the the common people, I don't know if I should really say that, you know, the, the you know, everyday people had heard of Jesus and were flocking to see him and to hear him and to be healed. So, too, were the religious leaders coming from all over. And, and Luke tells us in that same verse 17, the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And, you know, I had, I'd never thought about it that, I mean, you know, Luke specifies that the power of the Lord was with him to heal. And, of course, it's a capital L, meaning God. But, you know, I, to me, once Jesus has begun his ministry and begun teaching and healing, I mean, he has always got that power. And, and it was just, it struck me as odd that, that Luke had that phrase in there. The power of the Lord was with him to heal. And then we have the story of the, of the paralyzed man whose friends brought him. You know, they couldn't find a way to bring him to lay him before Jesus. So they went up on the roof and led him down through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. And, and this is another thing that's always amazed me is that, is that, you know, they would go up, you know, and, and the roofs could be opened up that way. It wasn't that they had done something horribly wrong, but, you know, they, they opened the roof up in, ex, in exactly the right spot so that they could let this man down in front of Jesus. And I mean, to me, that's another sign of God being at work. I mean, because they could just as well have you know, opened up in a different room. But, you know, they found the spot so that this man, as they lowered him on this mat, came down right where Jesus was. And and it says, when when Jesus saw their faith, or it says when he saw their faith, according to meaning Jesus, you know, he, you know, he realized how much these friends of this man believed that, you know, Jesus could do this miracle. I mean, you know, they just, they lowered him down, knowing, trusting, believing that Jesus would, would know the plight of this man and would know that, that they believed that he could heal him. I mean, and he saw their faith and he said, friend, your sins are forgiven. A strange thing to say to someone who is paralyzed, laying on a bed, can't walk, can't, you know, get around on his, his own, um, uh, but this was what Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And uh, the, the religious leaders, you know, just looked at that as, as blasphemy because no one could forgive sins except God, they said. And, I, I, you know, it's strange because they would, you know, these, these same religious leaders as people would bring their sacrifices to the, to the temples, um, didn't they then, you know, would, they would see the sacrifice that was given and, and forgiveness was there. I mean, that was their belief, their trust. And, and I guess, yes, the sacrifice was to God, but it was done in the presence of, of the religious leaders. But I, I would think that they would have, you know, you know, say like, go on your way, or you know, the God accepts your forgiveness, your sacrifice. But, but they, you know, they they looked at Jesus as 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 blaspheming, with that statement of of forgiving, and 
And so then, it, you know, they didn't say this, but it says Jesus perceived their their questions. You know, so Jesus knew what was in their minds. And, and that's, again, another sign of, of the godly powers of Jesus. To be able, I mean, sometimes we can say, well, I know what you're thinking. Or, you know, I mean, you'll have that conversation and, you know, you find somebody that's kind of on the same wavelength as you are. Uh, it, it doesn't always happen, but but Jesus, you know, he knew that these religious leaders would react in that manner when he when he said that. He's had some experience with them already, and so he asked them a question: which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say stand up and walk? And he doesn't really give them a chance to respond. But he says that so that you may know the Son of Man has authority to, on earth to forgive sins. I say to you, stand up, take your bed, and go home to that man who was paralyzed on that mat. So he, in order that he would be able to show these religious leaders, and he calls himself the Son of Man, he doesn't say the Son of God, but he says the Son of Man, and it's capitalized, showing again to us that, you know, he is God. Um, and immediately, again, here's that, uh, uh, that word immediately comes into play. The man stood up, took his bed, what took what he had been lying on, and went home glorifying God. He realizes where the healing came from. And just like his friends who lowered him down in front of Jesus, he, he believed. And, and then it says, they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, we have seen strange things today. And yes, it was. I mean, it was a strange thing to see, you know, first of all, these, you know, opened up the roof and lowered a sick man down. But for Jesus to proclaim the forgiveness and then to say to this man, stand up. You know, he, he didn't put his hands on him. He didn't do it. He just, you know, it, it says he, he spoke. He said, I say to you, stand up, take your bed and go home. And, you know, the power of the word of God is, is evident. And, and that's the power of the word of God when he says, you know, through Jesus, I love you. When God says to us, your sins are forgiven. It's the power of the word of God that we believe that we trust in. You know, and it's, you know, uh, I've, I've heard that said many times. And it's, it's the word of God that has power. And there's power in the word of God. And after this event was over, Jesus went out and it says that he came across a tax collector named Levi sitting in his tax booth. And he says to Levi, follow me. And Levi, just like the other, you know, Peter, Andrew, James, and John, got up immediately and followed him. It doesn't, he doesn't say immediately here. It just says he got up, left everything and followed him in this translation that I have. And then Levi, Matthew, the tax collector, provided a great banquet, it says, in his house. For there was a large crowd of tax collectors and others sitting at the table. And again, here are these Pharisees and scribes complaining because Jesus is associating with sinners. You know, a horrible thing to do, associate with sinners. And Jesus' response to them, you know, when they ask, why do you eat with such people, basically? Those who are well have no need of a physician, but to those who are sick do. And in verse 32, I've come to call not the righteous, but sinners to repentance. And I have come to call, to invite, to welcome, you know, sinners to repentance. You know, it, you know it's... It's an invitation, you know, it's, I mean, Jesus, just like he, he says to Matthew, uh, Matthew, Levi, the tax collector, follow me. That's, it's an invitation. It's in a way a commanding invitation, you know, follow me. But it's just like when Jesus says, I came to call, I came to invite, I came to welcome. I came to say to them, come to me, all you who are heavy laden and, you know, with burdens, burdened down and I'll give you rest. You know, it's. It's an invitation from God to come to repentance. You know, he says, I have come to call sinners to repentance. Help us to realize our need for forgiveness and a savior. 
And then they talk about, you know, the disciples fasting and, and following protocol. And Jesus talks about, you know, that you, know, you don't, you don't fast when you're with the bridegroom. And then he talks about the, you know, the, no one tears a piece from a new garment and sews it on an old garment. And no one puts new wine into an old wineskin. Otherwise they will burst. And what, common sense. You know, Jesus is saying, use your common sense. And, and, you know, because those things that, you know, that sewing a new, new material on old and using old wine, I mean, just, I mean, people knew and understood. It was common sense that they wouldn't do that because it wouldn't last. And common sense tells some of us that we need God and that God grants us that forgiveness. And it's not only common sense, I mean, to know that we're sinners, but it's an act of faith to believe that God does invite us and forgive us.